Communication is the key to building trust between citizens and local government, and that is what the role of the PIO is all about, building trust through communication. And with me today is Corporal Kirk Zayner of our police department, who has, new, has recently assumed the role of PIO, or Public Information Officer, a role I know well because that is the role that I also play for the other departments at the City of Hot Springs. So welcome, Corporal Zayner. Thank you. It's good to have you today. It's good to be here. You're new in this role, although you're not new to the police department. So let's Correct. start off by asking you a little bit about your background and experience. Okay. Well, I'm Corporal Kirk Zayner. I was born and raised here in Hot Springs. Um, after I graduated Hot Springs High School, I moved down to Louisiana, attended college there, and went to work for the Bossier City Police Department. And I spent 12 years there. Then I moved back home. Uh, there's nothing like home, so I moved back to Hot Springs and uh, came to work here at the Hot Springs Police Department, where I've been for 10 years now. 10 years? Yeah, so I've and got 20, 20, of, 22 of, years law enforcement experience. 22 years, but yet the 10 years at the police department, you've, you've obviously worn several different hats and played different roles. Yes, well, in, in my career, I've, I've worked in uh, patrol uh, to include some uh, time in motorcycle patrol. I've worked criminal investigations, crime scene investigations, spent five years on a SWAT team as a sniper. I have uh, been a school resource officer and now a public information officer. And I'm sure all of those responsibilities have helped prepare you for the role that, that you play today. Absolutely. What does a PIO do at the police department? Well, the, the PIO, the, the main responsibility for the PIO is to issue and publish press releases and disseminate that to the media. Mm -hmm. We have, of course, as you well know, we wear many hats. So I also work closely with our crime prevention officer, Corporal Sonia Luzader. And we, we go out and give educational presentations and, and just represent the department. Mm -hmm. We're standing here in front of a neighborhood watch sign. Yes. Now, how does that tie into your department? Well, uh, myself and Corporal Zader head up the uh, neighborhood watch program. And what we do is we assist uh, neighborhoods in, in setting up uh, neighborhood watch programs. And then we go out and, and do training for them and educate them on how they can better protect themselves and their neighborhood, but collectively as a, as a neighborhood, not just an individual. So, as part of that, are you advising citizens how they can help police do their jobs? Yes. Uh, the citizens can help us do our job, or they can be the eyes and ears for, for us. A lot of times the, uh, the leads we get are from citizens calling in or sending us emails on suspicious activity or something they've seen. Sometimes we actually get video from um, citizens' home video systems, and that helps us solve crime. So the citizens are an integral part of, of us doing our job. With today's modern technology, the cell phone and the camera, you can do a lot to help the police, yes. can't you? Yes, and a lot of our citizens do, and, and this uh, neighborhood watch in, in this neighborhood win right now has, has helped us tremendously, and they've sent many emails and phone calls giving us information that's helped us solve crimes. They're a very active group. They are. Now, speaking of active, today people are all involved in social media, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. Uh, now, is that part of the PIO responsibilities as well? It is. We have a Facebook page, which I'd encourage everyone to go to and like us on Facebook. Um, but we do post information on Facebook just to, uh, to help get the message out to the citizens a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. Some people check that every single day, so it's a way to get the word out quickly. It, it is. And it certainly is. a way to make, to make information spread rapidly. Um, so we've talked about social media, but you also have a number of programs at the police department that are under your supervision and, and development. One of those is the Citizens Police Academy. Yes, yes. We, we have a Citizen Police Academy that uh, when, when we're holding an academy, it's uh, every Thursday from 6 to 9 p.m. And that's, uh, it's a 12-week program. So it's every Thursday for 12 weeks. Our next academy is going to start on March 3rd. Um, you can go on our website, which is hotspringspolice.com. Uh, you can download the application there and then and submit it back to us. Since it's going to start March 3rd, we need the applications in very early part of February, but uh, you can certainly go online and, and apply for the Citizen Police Academy. And if for some reason that time frame doesn't work out for you, you continue to hold those classes every year, We, we, have, we have multiple classes every year. Mm -hmm. So citizens can choose a time that's best for them when they can get away and take those night classes. Absolutely. And the good thing about the Citizen Police Academy is it really gives the citizens an opportunity to see this, the inner workings of the police department. They're going to get exposure to the field operations, special operations, the SWAT teams, the canines, the crime scene, the, the, what the detectives do. So when they walk away, they're going to have a totally different opinion and a good opinion of, of the police department and 
who does the job and how we do the job. And what about the graduates? Do they stay involved? The, the graduates have the opportunity to become volunteers and we utilize volunteers in a number of ways. Uh, some actually working in the offices at the police department, some uh, do uh, downtown patrol, uh, foot patrol, and just assist citizens, uh, especially in the summertime with directions and just getting them the help that they need. And as a graduate of the police academy myself, I can tell you that it's invaluable training for citizens who want to be more engaged in local government. So you can truly make a difference after you uh, learn a little bit more about police work behind the scenes. Absolutely. Now there's a youth component to it as well that's, that's developed in, in more recent years. Well, we actually held the first youth police academy this past summer. So it's the first one. It was a huge success. We're going to continue to do it. Uh, it will be held this summer in July. We don't have a specific date set yet, but it's for uh, area youth uh, in grades 9 through 12. Uh, there is an application process for that also. Uh, sometimes if we get too many applications, we're going to have to pick and choose, but um, we, we'd really like to have uh, another huge class like we did this, this past summer. And it's the same same format as the Citizen Police Academy, only it's a five-day academy that, that runs the entire length of the day. And uh, they'll be exposed to the same things that, that we uh, do with our Citizens Police Academy. And you d dedicate an, an amazing number of officers at the police department to interact with these young men and women. Yes, because we wanted to, we wanted to uh, give them a, a full spectrum of what the police department does. So again, we brought in uh, school resource officers, administrative personnel participated, a SWAT team. So, so they got to meet uh, a lot of people from different walks of life at the police department. And the young people that can attend, I take it these are teenagers? Is that yes, the age range? Ninth grade through 12th grade. Very good. Okay, let's move on to another very big part of your work at the police department, and that is recruiting new officers. Yes. How are you involved in that process? Well, the recruiting process, uh, we, we do travel the state. We go to area colleges, uh, job fairs, and recruit people. Uh, we also recruit people word of mouth, and, and we do have an application uh, opening that will be coming up uh, fairly soon. Um, if anyone is interested, you can, again, go on the Hot Springs uh, Police website. You can view the pay scales, the job descriptions, the disqualifiers. You'll have to pick up applications at Human Resources, which is at 133 Convention at City Hall, and turn that application back in to them. Um, it'll have to be uh, turned in during the, the time frame of the job opening, and that should be end of the year, early part of next year, I believe. Now, are those applications available online as well? You know, some part of it is, I know, but if, if in doubt, definitely contact HR. Right, I, I believe they can download the application mm -hmm. online, but it does have to be turned in to HR. I see. So, the recruitment process, it's quite involved, isn't it? There's a number of steps to it. There's a number of steps. I mean, once, once somebody applies, then they're gonna to have to go through physical fitness test, and once they pass that, a written test, and, and then the process really starts with background investigations and, and interviews. So it, 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 takes, it takes months to uh, process somebody all the way through the, the system. So ultimately, you, you are ta targeting quality people to be future police officers. Yes, we just want the best people. Well, very good. So the, the recruitment process t is ongoing because you're always seeking new officers, yes. I assume, and a, a very big part of your operations. Once those officers are on board, um, I, they, they go through the V5 system, don't they? They do. And, they... and that starts, they're going to go through a, an academy process first. Mm -hmm. Uh, once they complete their academy, then they'll come back and do in-house training, and then they'll be assigned to uh, various field training officers for, for training on the street. So from the day they're hired until they're actually on their own is going to take uh, about a year. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a lot of responsibilities for the PIO and a lot more than just talking in front of the camera, although you may be the face of the police department when there is a, um, an, an incident involving law enforcement. Uh, you're going to be interacting a lot with the news media just as we do. But is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, nope, just please go on uh, Facebook and like our Facebook page and, and uh, look at our uh, website. It's got a wealth of information. And if you have any questions about any of this or setting up a neighborhood watch program, uh, call 321-6789 and you can reach me at extension 6740. And the hotspringspolice.com website, that's a special URL as you say, is very extensive. So, so definitely check it out. You'll learn a lot more just through that website. Thank you so much for joining us welcome, today. Barry. Thank you. We appreciate it. Welcome uh, on board as a fellow PIO. Okay. 
Thank and you. we'll be glad, of course, to assist you in any way going forward. We enjoy working with the police department and all that they do. Uh, and we appreciate your service as well. Okay. Next week, we will be bringing you more city news.